Hello and welcome to this camera bag 2 tutorial. Let's get started. Load an image and let's try this one here. Here's a nice picture. Alright, now as promised in the title of this video, let's completely screw this photograph up. Now, when camera bag first opens, you're presented with this styles palette. And here we are, you can see the various different things here. This is one thing I like very much. You can go down it and you can see immediately what kind of things you can get. Well, let's let's try something. Let's try something at random. Let's try 1958. No, this photograph's younger than that. Look at the style. Let's try 1983. We can apply that just by clicking on it. And let's try a couple of other things. Well, Colour Cross seems to be a popular one. I'm feeling creative right now. Let's put that on there. All right, what else can we do? Ah, now I like this. You can put on a thing here where you can change it and you can put this little kind of, looks like an old fashioned camera there. Let's put that there. Okay, I like that. All right, what else can we put on? Poolside, what's that? Lazy days of summer made hazier softer. And this is a lazy day of summer. So put that on there. Okay, there we go. There's my masterpiece. I always knew I was creative. Here's the proof. So then I come up to here and I, I save my image. And then the good thing about it is that if I just press my right arrow key, I can come to the next picture in the sequence. I can apply the same effects to there and to there and to there. And I can get a consistent style going all the way across. Save all my photographs. Hey, presto, I'm an artist. Everyone's really impressed. And then my other half comes in and says, what have you done? And I said, well, hey, I've, I've been creative. I, I've, I've enhanced our photographs. And my partner says, that's a load of rubbish. Get rid of it. I want the old photograph back, but I want the old photographs done better. And I say, well, I can't because I've, I've overwritten them. And this is the problem. Can I say from the outset, I'm not here to kick camera bag two. I think it's a very good piece of software and for the money, it's really, really good. With this though, what I did was I threw the kitchen sink at this picture. I threw a whole load of filters at it without really thinking about what I was doing. And I was assuming that because I was making it look different, it must be looking better because I'm using a professional filter, which can really enhance a photograph. But just because you can doesn't mean you should. There's also things that can be done to this photograph to enhance it subtly. So it just looks like a nice photograph without a whole load of fancy special effects thrown at it. Just something to think about that if someone looks at your photograph and says, hey, that's a really nice photograph and you've enhanced it using camera bag, you've succeeded. But if somebody looks at your photograph and says, wow, that's some really amazing special effects, but they're not even looking at the subject, in this case, a boy riding a horse in the middle of the countryside, you've done something wrong. All right, let's get started with this. Now, before I even load up camera bag, there's something I can do in the background, which is going to save me a whole load of time, grief, and even more grief a few years from now. This is an old folder of mine. It's all the photographs I took in the early part of 2007, so 2007 early. There's around 300 photographs in there. Well, that's because of digital photography. You know what it's like in the old days, you had a roll of 24 films and you thought about what you were taking. Nowadays, you've got effectively an infinite amount of pictures. So you go click, 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 and you end up with about 10 photographs of somebody starting out smiling with their eyes closed and ending up with kind of a half grimace because they're so sick of smiling at you while you say, no, no, I'll just take another one. I'm going to call this. I'm going to select various ones from here. I go through them, make notes, write down their names on a piece of paper if you have to, and then you'd copy all of them. And then I had a folder called early I'm making a new folder called Early Sends because I'm going to send them off to the laboratory to be processed. And I would paste them all into there, which leaves me with about 72 files. That's still quite a lot, but I'm not going to make my friends look at 300 photographs from the early part of 2007 for one simple reason. I like my friends. The other reason I've copied the photographs I want and put them into a new folder is I can make whatever adjustments I want on these and the originals are safe. So now at some point in the future, when I know a bit more about how to improve photographs, I can come back to my originals, make new copies of them and start all over again. When you first load up camera bag, you come to the styles tab. I want to forget about that. These tutorials will be concentrating on adjusting your photograph instead of putting a style on there. Now, the first thing you should do with any photograph is crop and straighten. And never center have realized this, all credit to them, because you can put any of these 
tools on later and you can swap them around like luminance, contrast and what have but you can't stick them before crop and straighten. They've done that for a good reason. Crop and straightening is the first thing you should do with your image. Of the two, you should rotate the image first. All right, let's come to our crop straighten icon and click on it. All right, we're given two things here. We're given a slider, which allows you to slide around, rotate, anything up to 15 degrees. You shouldn't need more than that, really. And then you've got the ability to start dragging out a rectangle for what you want the final photograph to look like. You can drag it from the corners, you can drag it from the sides, and you can move it around by clicking anywhere in the center. I want to take this back right up to the borders. And you've also got different aspect ratios. That's how wide it is by how tall it is. So for example, 16 to nine, that's like 16 units going along the top, nine units coming down the side. That's the standard widescreen format for TV in case you want to display it on TV. And you've got various different formats here. If the end result of this is that you're going to take this off to the printers or the local chemists and get them printed out on one of these high-speed digital photography machines, could I recommend you try and keep the ratio more or less as your camera supplied it? The reason being is these machines inside the chemist or the where they print out thousands and thousands of digital photographs, they're thinking they're going to be dealing with something which is about this ratio that the camera's giving you. You start doing something very narrow like this, for example, it might get confused. It might give you some results that you don't really like. So I'm going to produce, I'm going to take this back to where it was originally. Okay, before I crop it, I want to try and straighten my image. I'll tell you why in a second. So I've got, so I've got that bar which is behind the boy. I can try and make that straight. Look, I've got these little guidelines here which divide the screen up into thirds. We'll discuss that in a second. Well, if I do that, okay, you'd think it would work, but it, it hasn't because now it looks like the background's going uphill. It wasn't. The reason for that is I didn't take the photograph straight on. I took it at a slight angle to that fence, which is in the background. So I'm getting something called perspective distortion on this. If you're getting that in your picture, what I would try and do is I would try and adjust from a line like this line in the background, the further away it is, the easier the job you're going to find to adjust it so it looks right. My problem with that is that there's no real line close to it which I can use to adjust. Not a problem. I can bring down this line here and I can adjust to it, move the line back, and I'm ready to go. Okay, so that angle is minus 1.22. I'm going to remember that. In fact, I'm going to write it down. Minus 1.22. Then I'm going to take it to zero. I'm going to show you why I rotate before I crop. The reason being is, OK, I'm going to crop to roughly whereabouts I want this image to be. Let's do it about there. OK, that's looking about right. Then if I start trying to straighten it up, well, Nova Center has been smart in this. They know that whenever you rotate an image, you get blank areas on the edges of the picture. But if I start rotating, I'm actually cropping into more of the image. It's having to compensate in ways I don't want. Whereas if I rotate first, I've got a clear idea of where I'm going to crop to. So let's take that back. Take that back. Straighten. Right, now where was I? Minus 1.22. Minus 1.22 degrees, that's about right. And then I start to crop the image. I'm going to try and keep the aspect ratio as much as I can. I'm also looking at these little grid lines, these little things down here. They divide the screen up into nine different squares. It's called the rule of thirds. Those are all a third of the way along, a third of the way down. And the theory being is, at the moment, that boy is right in the middle of the picture. It's looking a little bit boring him just sat there. Whereas if you move around so that the boy's face, it's always the face. The face is the always the most important part of any photograph, especially the eyes. If I move the picture around so that the boy's face falls on this third here and this third here, you're going to get a slightly more interesting photograph. 
Now, don't follow this slavishly, please, because I'd rather have a little bit more of the horse stall on there. So I'm going to take it to, I'll say there, because that saddle's nice. I'm not going to get it so it's bang on this third of a line here. But right now, it looks just a little bit more interesting than it was before. It's also given me a chance to get rid of that bit on the end, that bit of fencing on the end, which isn't really adding much to the picture. OK, so there we go and apply that. All right, let's go on to the next videos to talk about color balance. Now, that's where you really start to bring your photographs to life. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby, which is on the iTunes store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, a memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance along with me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time.